In this video, I'm going to help you to understand how to draw elevations uh, for your house using CAD. So I'm again using the Berry House to do this, and I want to kind of show you some of the things that I use to draw the elevations. So obviously, I flipped it around where I can per, uh, I can project all sides of the house to do each elevation. So that's what I'm going to instruct you on how to do today. First thing we want to do is let's let's copy the house. So I'm going to highlight the house. Don't worry about all of the the dimensions and everything. I'm going to right click, copy section, and then I'm going to move it somewhere where I can manipulate it. To help me a little bit better, I'm going to get rid of all of these external uh, dimensions so that it doesn't confuse me when I'm trying to project up to that. I could go ahead and, and uh, get rid of them all if I needed to. And please forgive me because my, my uh, CAD is running a little slow because I'm running the, uh, the recording software uh, at the same time. So both are pretty big programs and uh, can eat up a lot of my RAM. So once I got this done, I'm going to copy this again and I'm going to lay myself out four of these. This one is the front elevation and I see I'm missing something there. I must not have got it all. Copy. And I'll put that in. Also remember that uh, you know you can pause this video at any time to uh, go and work on yours and then come back and watch f further. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that you need to pause and do it, but uh, you use your own judgment there, pause the video, uh, work on it yourself, and then return back to the video if you need help. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to start turning these around because I need the front elevation and then I'm just going to turn it and do the, the right elevation. I'm going to turn this and do the rear elevation. I'm going to turn this and do the left uh, elevation. So first thing I want to do is just rotate. It don't matter where you, you go in there. So basically highlight, click on rotate, or you can highlight and right click and get to rotate. Uh, down here it's asking for a... Uh, base point so just somewhere in the center there and then it tells you you can uh, you can specify the rotation or you can just rotate it yourself so I'm going to turn this around so that my right side is facing down I'm going to do the same thing to this one so that my rear is facing down and I'm going to turn this one so that my left side is facing down okay one of the things that I want to do first is I want to give myself uh, a ground level to work from. So um, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the floor. That, that's going to be my ground level at this point is the floor. And we can come back and, uh, and actually add the finished grade and so forth. So we need a baseline. So uh, over here on your drawing or your draw, uh, if you pull down on this, I generally hit this little pin here. That keeps that open because I use this a lot. This is construction line. And so I click on that and I come back into uh, the drawing palette. And if you'll notice down here, you've got a couple of different uh, choices here. All right. So I generally use horizontal, vertical, and angle. So I can also get to these by right-clicking. And then I'm going to go on horizontal, and I'm just going to put me a line here, all right? So that line, if you'll notice, it goes forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's a construction line. I can shorten these and turn them into drawing lines uh, later. Uh, so the first thing that I need to do is use that, um, that, that wall section that you've already drawn to bring into place. So I don't have that in here, so I'm going to go ahead and draw it real quickly. Uh, so if you if you haven't got it, you can go ahead and, and 
and draw it again as well. So I'm just going to do a, a rectangle and I'm going to put in uh, uh, three, let's see, what man, I forgot what our, what size is our, we have, okay, so it's uh, four inches or three and a half. So I'm going to go and start off with that. Where was I? There. All right. So I'm just going to pull up and uh, then I can just start typing. The first um, number is going to be the X, which is 3.5. And then a tab. And then I can punch in 1.5. And I'm not putting in a unit because uh, in the architectural uh, settings, then inches is default so I could just hit that and then boom there it is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say that I'm gonna put an X in here which means this is my section of a 2 by 4 and so I'm going to use this offset uh, button so I'm gonna click on offset and if you'll notice down here it says you know specify the offset distance or through which is we don't have a through at this point. Through means default or the last time, whatever you had the last time. Well, we don't. We didn't set a last time because it's the first time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and type in eight foot, 1.5 inches, and I'm going to click on this line, and then you'll see that if I, you know, it's asking me to click again because I need to give the, you know, which side I'm going on. So I'm going to click it there. So now I have, uh, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it at the top. Now, if I go straight up here, I should get either a center or a um, parallel if I have all of my uh, settings correctly. And then I'm going to click again so that I have a double top plate there. Now I'm going to do a vertical line to each side here and I'm going to trim this off so that I have this. Now I can get rid of that. I don't need that anymore. I'm just deleting that. Alright, so I'm going to keep this bottom piece here. And uh, so now I need to take a look at a couple other things. Number one, what slope of the roof am I going to put on here? Uh, and and what are those materials going to be made out of? So I'm actually I should have left this on. I'm going to put that back uh, because I'm going to do a couple of things. Actually, I want to do one thing right quick. In in my case here, when I'm drawing this, and I told you that my walls were four inches thick. Okay, so that means that I'm putting the OSB in 0.5 inches. I'm going to offset that okay so I've all set that a half an inch over now this is my OSB that's on the outside of the house and let me let me go ahead and draw a little bit more so that you'll understand why I do this so uh, this is actually I'm gonna offset from my subfloor which is three quarters of an inch or 0.75 all right so there is my my plywood now and I'm going to extend remember that you can get to the trim extend right there you can extend this on down all right so this is now my plywood subfloor I'm going to shorten this up cut that out and then I'm going to add my uh, what comes next my I'm, I'm lost all of a sudden I'm going to add my floor joist and I'm going to make this uh, a two by eight. So uh, eight inches is actually seven and a quarter inches. All right. So now I have my, my outside band and I'm going to put this X in here again to make sure that I know that that is uh, the section of that. All right. So uh, next thing is going to be the mud seal. And I'm going to use a 2 by 8 on that as well. So this time I'm going to have to put the 7.25 in first. Tab and then 1.5. Put in my little cross here. I could have really just copied this and laid it down, but um, I didn't want to. 
All right, so lastly, I'm going to make my, uh, my CMU foundation. But instead of coming off at this point, I want to come off a half an inch off of this point. In other words, I want to be in line with that. So if I, you know, if I just tap on that corner and tap on this corner, then it will extend and give me an X there. All right, so now I'm going to type in 7 and 5 eighths by 7 and 5 eighths. Okay, so now what I'm trying to get at is now my sheathing comes all the way down and is even with the, f the front of my CMU. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explode this, this triangle here so that I can offset these sides 1.5 inches and 1 inch. And I'll, I'll kind of show you what I'm trying to do here. So at this point, I now have, it's one inch at the bottom, it's an inch and a half at the top. I'm just going to grab that and move it. Now I'm going to get rid of this line and that line. This is actually what the walls of the CMU look like uh, in real life. So, you know, we can go up through here and we can copy this and however many courses we need, and I'm just going to stop with three at this point, uh, is all I need. So I can just copy and lay this down. Now, one thing that I didn't do, actually, forget that. One thing that I forgot to do is I forgot to give myself a three-eighths of an inch uh, joint, bed joint there. So don't, don't let that mess you up. So now I can go back and, and do this better. All right, so copy. And I'm going to give it three joints. Now that should be, if I'm correct, that should be two feet. Something, I, something is up with my, again, because I'm doing two things. So sometimes it gets a little bit hairy and, oh, I see the problem right there. So I got, it, uh, it doesn't want to click exactly where I want to. Uh, when I'm doing when I'm running these two programs because it's 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 massive now Let's try it. Let's see if we should have a correct two feet there Yes, we got exactly two feet there good. Okay, so uh, I need to also Do my footing so I'm gonna go ahead and do my footing and what I usually do instead of messing with this well uh, Let's let's try that that same thing again. So I'm gonna click on this point point. And once that little green button, now if I move it, I lose it. So I'm going to click on that. You see the little green uh, line right there. If I click it again, I lose it. And then I'm going to move over, and it tells me the extension. If you look there, it changes. All right. Well, I could, uh, I could just, uh, just find that uh, movement by moving it over. Or I can just type it in. So I'm going to use a two foot footing, a two foot by one foot deep footing. So uh, actually, I'm going to do two foot by 10 inches. Yeah, we'll save a little concrete. So, uh, so I want it to fit center on this wall. So I'm just going to type in eight and hit enter. And so it basically jumped eight inches over from this. And then I can come down. And I'm, the first number I'm going to type in is 24. I'm going to tab. And the next one is going to be 10 for 10 inches deep. So there, boom. Now I have my footing. I need to add a couple of rebar in here. So I'm going to pull down uh, from the center there to about there. I mean, it doesn't really matter how particular you want to get. I mean, I could type in 8 inches. And uh, then from there, I want to do, and this is the radius, all right? So you'll see where the little, the little dotted line there says it says best the radius. Or uh, if you'll look down here, I can click this and hit the diameter. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the diameter, and I'm going to say 0.5 inches or half an inch for number four rebar. Uh, I'm going to copy this. Actually, I'm not going to copy this. I am going to go up here to my hatch. We haven't talked about hatch. Uh, yet, so I'm going to click on hatch, 
and it will pop open with a whole bunch of these things here. Hatch is like a filler, so I can give it different uh, different uh, looks here. So I'm going to go to solid, and then I'm just going to click on the inside of this like that. Now, this made this. It's got a it's it's got a ring around it, and it has a solid color inside of it. <coughs> Don't really care about so much about the color at this point, uh, but what I want to do is I'm going to highlight all of this, and um, then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go up here and hit this line here, click, and then click over here, and I have moved it. So it is now uh, underneath my wall, and I'm good to go with this. Now, I need to let folks know that this is concrete in here, so I'm going to go back to my hatch. And this time I'm going to pull down the little method here, and then I see architectural concrete. So I'm going to click on architectural concrete, come back inside of my little area here, and I click, and then it puts in this hatch of concrete. Uh, I could go even a step further and, and show that these are inside the block, uh, just for you know, just for practice. Go ahead and do that as well. And so I'm going to come up here to this first ANSI uh, 31, which is just diagonals. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click in each one of these little cells here so that I can show that that is a concrete block. Now, it's at a diagonal. All right, so I need to change that and I also want to make it a little bigger. So if I click on that and I have my properties open, so if you don't have your properties open, go to view up here at the top and click on properties and it it will it will come open like that most of the time but I if you come right over here and just you know when you move it over there it will dock itself there uh, very nicely I usually draw with that open all the time because sometimes I have to change the attributes of these uh, drawings so I click on this and I come over here, and right now it's at an angle of zero, but it's really at 45. So I'm going to change this to 45, and you see where it, it goes straight up and down. Well, that's wrong. I need to go negative 45. Now it lays over the way it's supposed to look. And the scale, I want to, um, let's see, 10. Whoop, come on. 10. No, that's too much. Let's do 5. Now let's do three. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so that's how we would we would hatch uh, the block. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to let people know that this is uh, mortar in here. So again, I'm going to go up to my hatch. Good practice on this, and I'm going to go find architectural sand, and then I'm going to click in this and that and in this one and you'll notice it just does a little dots in there so what I want to do is I want to in I want to decrease this a little bit let's see what half does uh, half is okay point two point two looks a little bit better alright so there now I have my mortar I have my concrete I have my rebar and I have my uh, my saw plate and I kind of need to show a little bit of the, you know, we're doing a, uh, we're just doing a wall section here. So we'll say that the joists run back and forth in this, and I don't know if it does or not. Uh, you know, if, if this was a wall section from here, they would run back and forth. But if it was a wall section from here, then we'd have to show it, you know, we'd have to show the end. No, I'm sorry, we'd have to show the ends this way, wouldn't we? I, <clears throat> what I mean by the ends is, you know, we'd have to copy this and offset it every 16 inches down through there. Uh, I'm also going to copy this line, and I'm going to put it up here where the floor is because uh, I'm going to save this uh, so that I can use it later. And I'm also going to give it a different color and a different layer as well. So just hang on for that for just a minute. Uh, I'm going to offset my inside line here a half an inch and that is because it is half inch uh, jet board so I've got my jet board on there got everything oh you know what I did forget I forgot the uh, J uh, 
anchor or uh, anchor bolt. So I'm just going to go with. Uh, I'm just going to go. Wait, wait, let's let's talk about polyline for a minute. So I'm going to go to the center of this, and I'm going to just pull up uh, about uh, two inches, and then I'm going to go down about 12 inches, and then I'm going to go over to the side another two inches, I think it is. I can't remember the size of it. Okay, so I have a single line there. So if I click on that, it's all one line. It's all together. And I can come over here to my global width, and I'm going to type in 0.5. See how wide the line gets? Now, I have just drawn a bolt that is, uh, that is a half inch in diameter with one line. It's very simple. I need to put some concrete in here because this is anchored, anchoring this this uh, anchor bolt in. So I'm going to click on hatching again, but this time <coughs> it's already on sand. I want it on concrete. So what I can do is I can match the property. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click match properties, and then it's asking me down here. Well, select the hatch object. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on this, and it changes to a crosshair and then I can come in here and I can click right in here and now I have concrete in there so I've got concrete in those first two uh, courses there that's going to hold the anchor bolt in place so I have my footing my foundation my um, mud seal my joists joist header uh, oh, I could, you know what else I could do? Let me, let me just show you this. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to draw me a circle in here equal to that point right there. And I'm going to fill this in as plywood. So I can come back up here to hatch. And I'm going to go right down to, can't remember which one generally is used. We don't do this a great deal. Uh, but just so you know, let's use the one that is ANSI 33 here. And I'm just going to click right inside of this one little cell. You see how it, it comes up there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type in negative 45. And I'm going to give the scale, let's say 2. Let's see what 2 looks like. No, we better go 1.5. Yeah, one and a half looks a little bit better. Now I can get rid of my circle there. Now I have uh, plywood. Okay, so that kind of gives you the indication that there's plywood. So let's go to the top and start doing our section of our roof. So I'm going to offset this, uh, this line up here at the top 5.5 uh, inches. So that's going to be a 2 by 6 running across through there. And uh, so let's let's make this house uh, super energy efficient, and let's add a raised heel to this house. So I'm going to copy this two by four here, and I'm going to put it back on top of the existing wall. I know this is you know a, a bunch of two by fours all together here, but you, you just hang on to me, and you'll see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to copy that again, and this time I'm going to go, uh, actually, let's, let's do this a different way, Let's because I'll have to do the calculations. Let's, let's offset this line here 12 inches, okay? And then I'm going to highlight this and copy it up to that line right there. And then I'm going to add my sides. Okay, so now I have built a knee wall on top of this, and uh, so this is going to give us more room within the attic to uh, put in insulation. Oh yeah, insulation. So let me let me show you how to do insulation right quick. Over here in your uh, lines, your prop line properties, if you'll click down. Remember the other day I had you put in batting. So click on batting, 
and then click on your line and then go to the center of this wall and down to the bottom bam just like that that's a lot of insulation right there so we again we need to go into our settings uh, into our properties and scale that down a little bit so down here in the line type scale um, you're gonna I'm gonna type in 0.3 whoops let's get where I need to be here 0.3 not enough how about 0.03 that's too much 0.1 let's see what this looks like still too much so 0.08 not enough 0.09 we keep playing with this until we get it right there we go so you want your insulation to look really nice and to be full because we want that fluff all the way from from outside to inside we still haven't decided on a siding or anything yet so we'll just leave that for right now one thing that I do want to add is a thermal skin to this so I'm gonna click on offset and I'm going to give it 0.5 and I'm going to add my thermal skin to the outside of this now remember that we, we made this plywood <coughs> we could go ahead and make this one plywood as well so let's do that so I'm going to match the properties of this particular plywood here and it's going to freeze up with me and then I'm going to click on this here and it's going to tell me that it can't see it because it's not all in the picture so I gotta make it big and then I gotta try to hit that little area which is not always easy up oh, I forgot to change my my wall but I mean that that should not be batting let's go back over to the home and change this back to by layer there we go and then when I click on that I'm gonna to have to go back home and change that to by layer as well all right so now I have the plywood in there but I need to change the orientation of it so I'm gonna to touch in 90 no it's 45 in it there we go so there is my plywood or my sheathing on the outside that also can be represented uh, as uh, uh, OSB as well now for my insulation layer I need to go in here and and change or show uh, my hatching in here for insulation and this particular insulation is a rigid insulation so we're going to use this cross hatch pattern let's see how big that is all right so I want to set that I want to go in there and make sure that that is zero so that it shows up in that direction there there now I have pretty much everything I need I could go in and show this as sand like I did down here actually let's do that so let's click on that you're getting a good uh, good lesson on hatching click on the match properties for our sand and then try to click in that hole there yeah so now we have all of our textures in there we've got jet board we've got our insulation in our cavity we've got our uh, sheathing and we have a, a thermal uh, skin on there now at this point uh, you're going to want to offset this one a half an inch because that is going to be the drywall upstairs or on the ceiling and something to be said about that so let's let's highlight those two lines right there and I'm going to trim that ceiling line off at this point and what I need to do is I need to trim no it's not gonna do it let me highlight that and trim I gotta find that there you go see when you get that little X on there you know you've hit that hatching and there so the ceiling jet board should come all the way over uh, to the wall and then the 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 wall uh, jet board is then put in place I'm gonna again draw me a little circle and somewhere out to there and I'm going to put this hatching which I've already copied 
right there. All right, before I get rid of my circle, I'm going to trim off these two pieces here. Then I can highlight that circle and get rid of the circle. All right, I don't need to put any insulation up here because I'm going to have insulation going across through there. Oh, by the way, I could, let's just, I'm going to draw me a line. Instead of doing the circle, I'm just going to draw me a line. And uh, this is going to be my cutoff line. Actually, I wanted that straight. And I could do a, a construction line there if I wanted to. So I'm going to cut this line off there and here. So this is the, remember that this is the ceiling joist that's going across through there. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to go up here. Did I have insulation uh, on here? I don't remember if I did or not center line I'd, let's uh, let's just make us go in here and click layer let's go in here and hit uh, new so if you if you hover over these it'll tell you what they are hit new layer and call it insulation hit enter and then uh, you can select the color I usually go with a pink uh, for uh, the uh, Owens Corning insulation is usually pink and then I want to change that line from continuous to batting okay once that's in there I can go ahead and close this and so I'm going to put this on a different layer and I'm also going to do the same thing with this and this time I'm going to highlight the, uh, the, in, the, the, the hatch and the outer piece there so that I know that uh, that is, is correct. Now it changed, why did it go back and change that? Oh, because the insulation layer, uh, by layer is, is, uh, is batting. That's right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was just trying to put this all on the same. So I have to go back and change you know this from batting back over to this line here this line type there I could also go and, and see it right now I'm drawing everything on the dimension layer so let's let's highlight that and let's make it a wall layer and we'll do the same thing with this wall layer and I'm gonna see what is the choices do we have reference layer don't want no reference elevation we don't have a lot of choices here we could go and add some more stuff um, I'm just gonna part put it part of the wall that's fine all right so we could go through here and change all this stuff all day long uh, let's go into uh, open layer properties again Okay, so click on that and let's add another one and let's call it wood and uh, give it a color of say green okay so once that's in there I'm going to close that and I'm going to highlight all of my wood I'm going to highlight just that line there. And just that line. And then I'm going to make it wood. There. Now it's coming together where we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, also, I don't want, you know, this is our, was our, going to be our floor line. And uh, so just so we don't get confused let's move it into let's move it down here somewhere now we're looking at what we're drawing only and notice that that floor line is not there so I can click on this lower line here I'm going to copy 
and I'm gonna put it up there. Now I have a, I have the top piece of my plywood on there. I'm just gonna leave the drywall as that dimension layer, just so that I have a different color on there, and I'll leave this on there for right now as well. So what I want to do is I need to switch over to the insulation layer and I need to draw in my insulation and I'm going to go to the center of this because I want it 12 inches wide uh, because we drew this 12 inches from this point to that point. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go all the way to this point over here, bam, just like that. Now I've got to go and play with my line type scale again and this time I'm going to give it 10 and let's see what happens. Why didn't it change? Something's not going on. Right. Let's see, 0.9. That's one, and I gave it a 10. Is it real big? No. Okay, so sometimes you have to, sometimes this wants to be a little bit finicky. So I'm going to grab the properties off of this, and I'm going to put it there. Now, maybe I can go and change this 10. Why did it go to that? I don't understand. One. See, it's not want to change at all. Five. This thing, sometimes, you know, if I weren't trying to show you how to do this, it'd be working fine. Maybe I need to be doing thickness. So, 12. No, that, see, that, didn't, that didn't change either. I don't know. Doggone it. Why is it not wanting to do right? goes back to that every time it's a stupid line and it is so small it's not want to draw anything what am I doing wrong here folks ah it's I know what it is so let me let me explain it's drawing that because it's really really short all right so there's where 12 is so obviously I don't need 12 uh, one is too big that's the problem it was just too big uh, point 0.5, no, point 0.3, point 0.3 is doable, uh, I'm going to give it point 0.31, there we go, that is right on there, so man do I feel like an idiot, so now i got to go and shorten this line back down, and let's see if it, what happens here, okay, good, 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 so, there, it shows us our, our batting that's up there in the roof, uh, or in the ceiling, and God, it was drawing that much of that line. I keep forgetting that this, how sensitive this thing is. Okay, so now what I needed to do is decide on the, the uh, slope of the house. So as you know, uh, the slope is determined. Let's go back over to the right layer here. I'm going to just go ahead and go wall. Uh, you know, it's it's whatever and 12. So if I go over 12 inches and then I go uh, down whatever here, then this is going to determine what my slope is. I'm just going to say 5. Let's just say 5. All right, so now my slope is going to be determined from the end of this line to the end of that line. So I go over to draw and I don't know why this unpinned and I'm going to click on my construction line, right click and then I'm going to hit angle. So if I click on this and I click on that then now I have an angle on here. So let's go and set this angle right on the inside corner of this wall. So this is going to be our bird's mouth now. Now, uh, what size uh, should I use here? I'm going to go with a 2 by 8 So 7.25 offset on that. And now there is my, uh, there's my, my, my roof rafter. And I'm going to trim this thing down to this line here. And I need to decide an overhang. So I'm going to set this overhang at 18 inches. Uh, and then I'm going to trim this off there so this is 
the end of my joist. I need to uh, do a couple of things here. What kind of plywood am I going to have on the roof? I'm going to go with 5 8 uh, plywood for the roof, so I'm offsetting that 5 8 of an inch. Cleaning it up a little bit. I'm going to go back to my hatching, grab this plywood here, and make that plywood there. Here I'm going to have to play at that angle a little bit. Uh, actually, no, I don't. So let's just let me open up your construction calculator. Five inch pitch, and then hit it pitch again. It tells us 22 and uh, 22.62. So let's see if we got here down at our angle 22.62. Well, that didn't work out right. What about a negative 22.62? There we go. All right, so now we've got our plywood laid in there the way we should. And then I'm going to, uh, I've got metal. I'm going to use metal on mine. I always use metal on every, about every uh, roof that I do. And I'm going to offset that uh, about an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to leave that one white. And I'm going to make these other two uh, wood. Okay, so now I have my, my plywood, I've got my, my metal roofing. You could do shingles. If you do shingles, you've got to draw each individual shingle out, so it's kind of a pain on that. Uh, so then I'm going to put my trim on the outside. I'm going to, it's going to be three quarter inch trim boards, one buys, and I'm going to do two, and I'll explain to you why here in just a second. I want to uh, pull this line down uh, to there so that I can trim those two pieces off. Whenever you put your trim on, your trim always caps your uh, plywood so you don't see your plywood on there. I can grab this one and I can extend it on down just a little bit past uh, that, maybe about a half an inch past that. And then I'm going to do a couple other things. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it somewhere right there in the center. It just it don't really matter. And then I need to, uh, let's pull this up for just a minute, and I'm going to use that to cut this off, and then I'm going to bring that back. All right, now, what the heck am I making here? What I'm doing is I'm going to make a piece of drip edge that's on here. And so... Uh, i just pull this down and pull this out at a 45 degree angle, about a quarter of an inch. There we go. Now I need to, I need to make all of these metals. So I'm going to go to match properties, click on my metal and make sure that all of those. So now I have my metal so thin it's so small it's gonna get lost and that's fine so what I generally do here is I measure the end of this to see what kind of measurement that I have here so that I can pick a board uh, and I've got eight and nine sixteenths so I'm gonna have to go with a two by ten or excuse me a one by ten so I'm going to just draw me a line there, and I'm going to offset that 9.25 inches for, for a 1 by 10. All right, so there it is. And now I'm going to move this line down to the next line, and I'm going to offset this uh, for a 1 by 6. And then I'm going to erase that reference line that I was using. I need to pull these two lines down to there. Okay, just by using the extend. And then I'm going to trim this one off. I'm going to trim this one off. Trim, trim, and trim. Now I have my nice uh, wood trim on here. So I'm going to make all of these lines wood right there, including this one. And I want to highlight this so that I can cut out for that bird's mouth there. Now it's, it's not so ugly and and looking bad. Now, what am I going to do here? 
a uh, couple of things I could do, and I'll let that leave that up to you. You can draw a line straight over. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, usually what I do is I, I do a, an open soffit, but for this, so you need to know how to do this, uh, let's draw an open soffit. I mean, let's, let's box in the soffit. And then let's offset this line for a quarter of an inch. And we're going to leave this as, as wall, but what I want to do is I want to, uh, I want to grab, I want to copy this sand that I've got going on here and I want to put it in here. Actually, I don't want to do that right yet. Let's don't do that right yet. Let's, uh, let's put the, uh, let's put our soffit vent in there. So let's start with a line and it falls right to the center and I'm just going to make that in there about like that. And then I'm going to offset that one inch in either direction. And then I'm going to get rid of that one. Now I have a two inch vent in there, but it needs to be a half an inch tall. So I need to go in there and make that a little bit bigger and trim it out so that I have a box like that. Now I want to go back to my hatch. I want to go to that top line up here that we were playing with earlier, the 31. Click in there. And then I'm going to make this a little larger. So let's go 0 0.5 and let's go 0 0.7 and let's go 1. Well, we got it 1. Yeah, 1's probably better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1's good. Uh, and then I'm going to match those properties of the metal because this is metal and leave that. Now I want to put this hatching inside of here because this is like uh, concrete board. So I'm going to go to hatch. I'm going to match my properties of the sand and then I'm going to put it in here and in here. Okay. So at this point, I need to figure out, well, what did I, how did I box this in? I need to show that. So I'm going to offset and do 3.5 inches from there. And then I need to pull that all the way to the side of the building. This is wood. So I'm going to make it green. I could go down here and make this green as well. It doesn't matter. And then I need to, uh, so this is going to be nailed onto the side of this, but I need to put a, a header here. So I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to type in 1.5. Always remember that X goes first and then 3.5. And then I have my crosshairs in here. I'm going to highlight the whole thing and I'm going to make it wood. Now. Cool. Now I need to pull all of these items up to the bottom of this. And by the way, it, uh, the hatching will not pull up. But if you click on the hatching and then pull it up like that, I still got something on there that is not right. There. Okay. And then uh, the same with this hatching here. You have to kind of just grab that. So if you look at it, you've got end nodes. So if you grab one of those, it does something funky to the, to the hatch. So if you grab that center slider, see that, that bar right there? Grab that center node there, and then you can pull up and click right in there. Now, again, we don't have our siding on there. We don't know what kind of siding we're going to put on there yet. So... Uh, we'll just leave that uh, off at this at its particular time but we have everything set here to know what you know what's going to happen up here okay so we can uh, we can begin I'm going to go and set this actually I'm going to uh, group it I'm going to group this now all of this is one particular group now because I hit group if I need to ungroup then I just go over here to ungroup and I'm going to move this. I'm going to grab the top of my subfloor here. And I'm just going to put it up here 
somewhere out of the way it's not hitting so I need to go down here and I need to turn on nearest just like that now I have something that I can go off of now in this in this particular house I am figuring for the ridge to run this way back and forth the ridge of the roof is going to run this way so I'm going to not work off of the front to start with I'm going to work off the side because I need to know how tall is this going to be so let's put us in a couple of construction lines vertical and I'm just capturing the outside of it I'm, I'll come back and get my windows and doors later uh, and then I just need to do a couple of things here. So one is I'm going to copy this again, and I want to grab this outside layer here right at the floor. So the floor, this outside uh, of, the, uh, of my sheathing, and I'm going to pull this right over, and I'm going to place it right there where it needs to go. All right. So because this is uh, grouped together, then I can draw on the top of this and then I just click on this and it'll delete it. No problemo. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to establish my roof. So I'm going to hit angle and I'm going to go to the, to the metal roof uh, and establish that. Go in there and drop it right in place, just like that. Bingo. Now I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw me a line between these two places here. So these are the outsides of the walls. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to come up here and hit mirror. And it's asking me for the first point of the mirror. So I want to hit on that line I just drew. I want to hit the center of that line that I just drew and then go up. So now it has established where my peak of my roof is going to be. So I'm going to highlight those two and I'm going to hit trim. And I can trim those two pieces off. Just like that. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go from this point. Now i got to turn that nearest off. Go to this point here. Bam. And uh, you know what? I didn't want to do that. I wanted to grab this line, this center. This I'm not going to draw this. So go in here and catch that right there. There we go. And I'm, all I'm going to do is just follow this around. And I'm just going to start it and stop it. Just leave it like that for right now because we'll come back and uh, play with that a little bit more. If I highlight this and I hit mirror and I come to the ridge of the roof now and click and go up, hit enter because I don't want it to erase the other one, then it gives me one on the other side. But I could have just easily went in here and if I highlight, if I, you'll notice that it, it, when, you, when you group something, it highlights everything. If I want to unhighlight it, I want to push the shift button, shift and then click on that again and it goes away. So now I just got those lines and that's all I wanted. I'm gonna hit mirror, hit on the end of the top of my roof. Notice that it's down there in the corner and then hit enter. I'm gonna get rid of that center line because I don't need it anymore because I have a center established. Going to cut this line, cut that line, get rid of my remnants down there and now I have the, the beginnings of my roof. I'm going to highlight this line here and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it right on this corner here. And then I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to highlight those two lines and I'm going to mirror them. My heater just went off. I did not realize how loud that thing was. I felt like I was screaming. It's so quiet in here now. Okay, so now I have my rake boards on. 
cool. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. I, I, do I need it? I do need it. Hang on, I need to establish one thing. Number one, I guess, at this, I guess at this point, we need to decide what kind of siding we're going to put on here. Uh, nevertheless, the corner boards are generally uh, about all the same. So, uh, let's just go with lap siding for now. I, we, we won't draw it on the section at this point. We'll do it on a on another uh, episode of of the Berry House doing sections. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this section right now. I still got it over here, uh, but I'm just going to I'm going to highlight this line here, and I'm going to offset it uh, about. Let's see. I had uh, had a half an inch uh, or yeah, half inch sheathing. I had a half inch of the uh, insulation, which that is now an inch. So my siding is going to be roughly about an inch or a half. We figure an inch and a half before, so we we better make it an, in an inch. So that's two inches so far total. Uh, and then the, the corner board is going to come out another uh, let's see what we're going to use let me let's go back over there for a minute let's let's look at this a minute so when we go to put our corner boards on uh our corner boards is going to go on top of this and they're usually a one by something or other so we have uh three quarter by oh it doesn't matter because i'm just i'm going to measure from here to there and I got an inch and a quarter. All right, so that's what I need. I needed to know where that corner board was going to be. So an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to highlight this. And I am going to copy it over an inch and a quarter. All right, so now I have an outside line. And now I'm going to offset that. And I like using uh, one by sixes for my, my siding, my corner boards and so forth. So I'm going to offset that uh, five and a half inches in the other direction. Did that go? It didn't go. Copy. 5.5. There we go. All right. So I'm going to give these some colors uh, just so that I know what's what. And then I, I'm going to highlight this and highlight that. And I'm going to trim, every, I'm going to trim these two outside ones out. And those two outside ones out. I need to get rid of this before it messes me up. That's a uh, that was our when we were drawing our floor. So now we have the bottom of our trim board. Bottom of the trim board is generally even with the top of the the uh, subfloor. And now I can take this line here and bring it out to my. Uh, corner board actually no I'm going to take it a little bit further than my corner board I am going to make it a total of two feet Ooh, that didn't work out let's let me try that again I'm gonna offset 24 inches there that's where it should be okay and then I'm gonna go up with that I'm gonna highlight this bottom uh, line and I'm going to get rid of my trim. Now I have a boxed cornice. I don't have one over here. Well, I don't have the trim or anything else. So let's, let's go ahead and highlight those and mirror those to the other side. Now we have them on both sides of the house. I could, uh, for aesthetics, go in here and cut this line out and make it look like that. But really, though, in, in all actuality, that line is going to be there because they're going to make this out of a couple pieces of boards. But uh, we'll, we'll, cut, we'll leave it like that. It looks prettier that way. I'm done with this. I don't need my outside lines. Okay. What I need to do now is establish this porch here. No, I don't. I'm, I'm going to show you a different way how to do that porch. We'll, we'll do that porch a little different way. 
All right, so now I need to do my windows. So let's, uh, let's do a vertical line, and I'm going to go to the inside of my windows. Just like that. Down here on my floor line, whoop, did I miss a window? Yeah, I did miss a window. I can just copy that. There. So I'm going to come down here on my floor, and I'm going to offset this floor 80 inches. That is 6 8. That's going to be the height of the tops of the windows. All right, so I'm going to highlight all of that and I'm going to trim off what I don't need. And then I can highlight that and trim off what I don't need. All right, so now we have the top of the inside of the window. Did we, did we size these windows? We didn't size these windows. So the ones in the kitchen need to be three foot windows and the ones in the living room can be much larger. We'll make those, um, we'll make them five foot. All right, so in the kitchen, I'm going to offset this first line 36 inches. And then I'm going to offset again. All I did was, since, I, since uh, I'm using the same command again, all I got to do is hit enter. And I'm going to put in five feet. And I'm going to offset those five feet. So we'll, we'll make those much bigger windows. I'm going to highlight those lines there and trim off what I don't need. So now we have, basically, what we have is this outside line right there all the way around. We don't have the, the casing. We don't have the window itself. So while we're here, so we could just match this up. And I think this is two inches. It is. All right, so I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to offset this two inches all the way around. And I'm only going to do one because I'm going to take this and copy it. But I am going to do this one, this smaller one, and then I can I can take and copy it. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to figure out uh, our, we're going to offset, and then I'm going to click on this, and we have three inches to the outside. And now I just need to clean it up a little bit. First thing I usually do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to trim off the inside pieces, anything that overlaps. And now I need to make these others larger. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, I'm going to extend. Remember that your extend is behind the trim unless you've put it up here like I did. And so I usually just you know I go to town. I let it. I'm going to. It makes my life a lot easier. Once I establish this, then I can come in here and just hit these. And then I want to go back to trim and get rid of these long pieces here. I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to make it a door or a window. Do I have windows? I don't have windows. So I'll just make it a door. Just like that. I can hit match properties on one line and I can change them all. I'm going to highlight all of this, and then I'm going to unhighlight, deselect that by pushing the shift button, and I'm going to hit copy. What kind of windows are these anyway? Let's uh, let's make them double hung windows. Let me just go back, take that back. All right, so let's make these double hung windows. So I'm going to take a line and I'm going to find the center of this and uh, just put it in there like that. Okay. 
So I need to offset this a half an inch in either direction. No, I'm sorry, an inch, because that was two inches, wasn't it? So I'm going to offset an inch, inch down, inch up. Get rid of the center line. Now all I want to do is I want to trim this first piece here. And then trim that there and then match my properties now I have a double hung window meaning that this slides up this slides down something else I want to do is I want to make some uh, references that this is glass and to do so all I got to do is just do a couple of lines at a 45 degree angle just like that and I usually make those blue I don't have a hatch. Uh, let's go and make us a hatch. So open up uh, layer properties, hit new, call that hatch. Come over to our color and hit blue. Go to our, it's going to be a continuous line, so that's correct. But our line weight, I want to change that to zero. Okay, so now my I've got a hatch layer, and that is set at zero, meaning that it's going to be a very thin line. So I'm going to change that over and make that into a hatch. And I'm going to group it. Okay, now it's grouped. And I'm going to copy it. And all I'm doing is hitting Control-C. So I highlight it, hit Control-C, and then by hitting Control-V, I can place it in there and I don't have to spend a whole lot of time. I'm going to go back and make this one a double hung window as well. And so to do this, I'm just going to highlight those two pieces and I'm going to copy those, but I'm going to copy it from the center line of the inside of the window, drop it doing the same thing, and then cut that out right there. So now I have two nice looking windows. So now I can highlight this deselect that inner piece there copy paste and do the same thing to our smaller window there oh, let's deselect that one center I don't want, you'd never want to have lines on top of lines if you can help it I get going so fast sometimes that uh, I end up leaving some of those in there all right cool so there is this elevation less this side piece here. Got some remnants going on there. <coughs> so let's put uh, the skirt board on it. So let's trim this. And I'm going to make this white. No, let's leave it let's leave it green and I'm going to offset it again I'm going to have a double board on here like this so my first offset is going to be five and a half inches and then my next one is going to be 11.25 which is a 1 by 12 okay I need to find out where my foundation is again so let's go and put a vertical line back up here where our stud layer is All right, and I'm going to highlight this floor line and get rid of the top pieces of those. Okay, I can go ahead and establish a um, go ahead and establish a, uh, a a ground line so it doesn't have to be uh, flat. I got a zoom in 15 minutes and I don't know what that's about. Uh, so I'm going to offset this three quarters of an inch there like that. Do I want to do it again? I do want to do it again. So that means I'm going to have to go out with this a little bit and then I can cut this one. Nope, 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 wrong way. Leave this one out, Cut, cut that one. So this is my original foundation line. 
this is going to be my skirt board. So you can kind of see how that's going to look now. I can highlight those. I'm on a mirror. Go up here and hit my center point on my roof and then clean these lines up as well. Actually, I can just get rid of that one, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. All right, so there is this side of the house. I'm going to put stucco down here. So I'm going to go back over to my sand and click on that. So here my sand is terribly, terribly, it's, it's huge. Oh, scale. Let's go to the scale, sorry. And put in one, see what we got. Da, da, da. That's okay. And I'm also going to change this to uh, the hatch so that it's not as as bright. So, I, you know, here I can see it, but when I go to print it, it'll look a lot better. <clears throat> so now I need to put my siding on, and I'm going to do something a little different here. I am going to put me a skirt board on here. Uh, let's make it uh, 7.25 inches offset up and uh, highlight here, highlight here, and then clean this up. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to go back to hatch. I'm going to go to the, the 31 again, and I'm just going to click inside here. All right, now I know this is, whew, that's big. So first thing I want to do is highlight that layer, and I want to make it a hatch layer. Could have done that to begin with. And then I want to go with my scale. I'm going to go 10. Nope, I'm going to have to go more than that. Let's do 60. There we go. And then let's do uh, 45, negative 45. All right, so let's see how big this is. Um, uh, I need to turn, I'm going to hit F3, so watch watch this here, okay, I could click on this to turn the this, this off, but if I hit F3, it turns it off, so I'm going to go up here and get as close as I can to that line, and as close as I can to that line, and that is seven and a half inches, that is great, cool, that worked out good, so now we've got lap siding on here. <clears throat> And then what are we going to do up here? So let's go back over to Hatch. And I'm going to grab the 32 and come in here and drop this. First thing I'm going to do is make it, you know, one of these days I uh, I could probably remember to go to the Hatch and uh, do that. It's stay on Hatch to begin with. All right, so let's go 30. And it needs to be a little bit smaller, 20. 20 is okay, and I want to go to 45, yeah. Now I have board and batten up here, and I have siding down here. Okay, so if you haven't already, go ahead and save. And what I want you to do is continue on your other one. So what you can do is you start with that horizontal line, go up here and place it right, turn your turn your thing back on, your, your uh, snaps back on and you, you can utilize this all the way so when you go to do the fronts and the backs basically what you can do is use that construction line on a horizontal and click on your your ridge and your joint lines here and you can you can pull all of that over into this so you're going to be seeing uh, a roof that's, you know, when you get over here, this roof is just going to appear like that because you're looking at this side piece here. One thing to make note, when you get over here, you're going to have two uh, roof thingies on here. So let me real quickly, uh, and then I got to get off and find out what the heck this, this thing was. So I'm going to copy, and I want to copy to my, uh, my frame line. I'm just going to go to that top line right there. And uh, 
pull this over and this down. Boom. Then I'll add one here. And then I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to mirror. And I don't have nothing to mirror off of. I need to put a line in here that goes, you know, that's the center of this room. Go back and I'm going to highlight those two pieces. Mirror. Find the center of that. All right. So now I can, I can go in here and I can uh, clean this up a bit. Trust me, this there is a there is a method to my madness. And when it's all said and done, you're gonna think, holy shit. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight all of this. And notice that I'm not I'm not highlighting all of it at one time because if I do, I'm gonna catch a whole bunch of junk I don't want. So uh, I'm just going in here and highlighting the pieces that I need. Alright. And now I'm going to, I didn't want to copy it, doggone it, I wanted to move it. Uh, I have a problem understanding copy and move sometimes. Make sure I get it all as well. Move. And I'm going to pull this straight down to my floor line. Okay, so now I can get, I'm going to get rid of these pieces here. Now, I, all I got to do, I mean, my, my roof is already set for this end of the building because it changed a little bit. So I'm already set for that. Okay, guys, um, try working on this on your own. And uh, if you have any questions, you hit any uh, road uh, blocks or anything, don't hesitate to, to text me and ask me a question. Uh, Luke, I know you like to email me with questions. But if you will text me, generally I can get back to you quicker with an answer because I've got my phone with me all the time. Okay, guys, uh, have a good one, and I'll see you later.